What's up everyone and welcome back to some more Oxygen Not Included content. Today is a viewer request from, there we go, Ritty Grape. He says, has another request for you. Could you do an updated, not using endgame materials, material overview? So that's what we're going to be doing today. So there are really only a couple of reasons why you would choose one material over another in Oxygen Not Included. And um, the first reason would be to assist heat transference. So slow it down, speed it up or stop it completely. And the second would be to store thermal energy within the material. And in determining what material to use, all you really need to look at is the heat capacity and the thermal conductivity. The name of the material, the material itself, is kind of not important. Um, so whatever your reason for building something, it should be based off the heat capacity and the thermal conductivity. Now, the thermal conductivity is what controls the rate of transfer of uh, thermal energy so whatever has the lowest ther thermal conductivity is what is taken into account when you're transferring thermal energy from one material to another uh, you can think of thermal conductivity kind of like a funnel where the bottom of the funnel you know where everything comes out of is essentially the thermal conductivity so increasing the diameter of the bottom of the funnel will allow more material through that funnel so it will allow you know more heat transfer through it and heat capacity is well exactly what it sounds like it's the capacity to store heat um, so essentially what it breaks down to is that you can store the same amount of energy in something with a higher heat capacity without raising the temperature more so an example of this would be right here i have some obsidian and i have some igneous rock now so what we're trying to show here is that obsidian has a heat capacity of 0.2 Igneous has a heat capacity of a one. Now we're, we have hydrogen at exact same temperature here and exact same mass. So we're gonna be dumping the exact same amount of thermal energy into both the obsidian and the igneous. But what we'll see is that the igneous will actually heat up less. It will be a, a lower temperature because of it can store more thermal energy without raising a temperature. So we can look here, the igneous is 21.5 degrees, obsidian is 27. And they're not really gonna increase at this point because they've, they've kind of reached a balanced state where the temperatures are relatively even, so we're not going to get much transference there. So because igneous has a much higher heat capacity than the obsidian, it was able to store the same amount of thermal energy, but it's at a lower temperature, which makes it a really good insulator. Um, so let's say, you know, we had a biome next to our base that was like 100 degrees and we wanted to kind of we wanted wanted the temperature barrier in between that and our base so we wanted to keep our base at a much lower temperature building a wall of igneous would help because it would be able to absorb a lot of that heat energy without increasing in temperature as much as like a material with a lower heat capacity so if you're looking to insulate from heat then something with a high heat capacity is very good at doing so mass can also come into play here but we don't have much control over mass so i wouldn't worry about it too much Another example why you would choose one material over another would be heat storage. So maybe you wanted to, you had a lot of excess thermal energy, maybe from a volcano or something, and you didn't really know what to do with it. So you wanted to store it up. Something with a high heat capacity could also store a lot of energy. Now, yes, it will take more energy to heat it up uh, by one degree than something with a lower heat capacity, but it can also store more of that energy. So whenever you're actually ready to transfer that heat out from whatever you're storing it into something else, it will be able to transfer to more things. Um, here's an example of this. So here I have hydrogen, 2000 grams of hydrogen at 86.9. And here I have oxygen, 2000 grams of oxygen at 86.9. Now, because oxygen has a lower heat capacity of one, uh, whereas hydrogen has 2.4, it may be the same temperature, but it has a, but it has less thermal energy stored with inside it. And we can see that by unpausing it here. Um, and we can see the window tile down at the oxygen has reached 22.4 degrees. Um, and the hydrogen, even though it's heating two tiles, it was able to heat both tiles up more than the single oxygen tile here. So it was able to, to increase their temperature by more than the, the one down on the oxygen. Not by much, but this is just a small example. We've only got 2,000 grams of hydrogen. So if we wanted to store a, very, a lot of uh, thermal energy, we could obviously increase the mass of the hydrogen and you know have more storage room there. So if you were trying to like store thermal energy, something with a high heat capacity and also a high thermal conductivity would be best. That way, when you're ready to transfer that uh, heat energy out, 
then you have the potential to transfer it fast. So let's talk about thermal conductivity for a second and why you would want something with a high thermal conductivity. Um, so let's say you had a volcano and you were trying to transfer that heat over to a steam turbine to power the turbine. Well, in this case, you would want something with a very high thermal conductivity and a very low heat capacity because you don't want to store a lot of thermal energy in the block, like in the tile itself. You just want it to transfer that energy as fast as possible over to the turbine. So here I have a row of obsidian and here I have a row of tungsten. Now the tungsten has a thermal conductivity of 60. The obsidian has a thermal conductivity of two. So pretty big difference there. Um, now in this scenario, the actual tile touching the magma is kind of irrelevant because the thermal conductivity of the magma is only one. So the magma transferring the magma to the tungsten is going to be the same rate as the magma to the obsidian. Um, but what's going to change is the tungsten tile here to the next tungsten tile and then the next tungsten tile. That's going to be much faster than that of the obsidian. And if we hit the temperature and we hit play, we can see that happen right in front of our eyes here. So even though the magma is controlling how fast the temperature of the magma is being transferred to the next tile over, uh, the tiles themselves are able to transfer heat between each other much faster than the obsidian would. Um, not to mention that the obsidian has a higher mass in this case. But even if the mass was the same, we would still have the same effect here. And then there's one other thing I should touch on, which is about thermal conductivity. Now, if you can get the thermal conductivity down to a low enough number, then it will stop heat transfers completely. You can see this with either insulated insulation, but you can see that thermal conductivity is zero for this, which means there will be no heat transference at all. Another way though, you can get around it without using insulation is by using insulated ceramic with any other, any other tile. And this is essentially because of the way the game ca calculates temperature transfer between two tiles. So, um, the insulated ceramic is actually a low enough heat thermal conductivity that it won't transfer heat to another tile or it won't be able to transfer thermal energy to another tile. So if you do a double layer of insulated ceramic and igneous rock, so whatever the heat is on the left side would heat up the igneous rock to that point, whatever the heat is on the right side would heat up the insulated ceramic to that point, but they would not heat transfer heat between each other. So to summarize, a high heat capacity with a low thermal conductivity makes a good insulator. A, a low heat capacity with a high thermal conductivity makes very good for uh, transferring heat very quickly or transferring thermal energy very quickly. Um, and then something with a high heat capacity and a high thermal conductivity would work very well to store a lot of thermal energy and then transfer it out very quickly as well. Um, but all you would really need for high storage would be for a lot of thermal storage would be a high heat capacity. So I hope that I was able to explain this well enough to be understandable and help some of you out there who are kind of struggling with what materials you should use for what. Uh, and if I didn't explain something, you can ask me in the comments or try my Discord or you know try me on Twitch or wherever. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down. But let me know why you didn't like it. If you want to, you don't have to. Um, and subscribe if you're new to my channel. If you're not subscribed, just do it because cause, cause why not? It's free. It costs you nothing. Anyway, thank you for watching the video, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.